Brock and Ramey met at Fox's Corner that evening as they had planned to do previously. As the two walked further down the gravel path, it seemed that after talking quite a bit, there was not much else to say. They seemed to enjoy the peaceful silence of the surrounding woods, the swaying of the trees, and the songs of the birds. Brock was slowing his pace and was intermittently shooting glances back and forth between Ramey and the gravel path. His head, which had quelled itself out of the grip of a headache earlier, was now starting to throb again. His eyes locked with Ramey's coincidentally, and his look caused her eyebrows to furrow. It startled her slightly, and seeing her look of bewilderment, Brock stopped walking. She stopped just a few steps ahead of him, and walked back to stand right in front of him. He was beginning to talk to her from the momentary silence from before. His tone was slow and quiet. He was explaining to her that as much as he liked her, and as much time as they've spent together, he felt as though he wanted to be completely honest with her about a few things regarding himself. Really? Is it bad? I haven't done something wrong, have I? He explained to her that there was a lot to him that she didn't see on the surface, but that aside from a few personal physical issues that he struggled with, there were things she needed to know. One physical issue was just a slight case of hypoglycemia, which caused occasional seizures. There was indeed a darker corner that he needed to tell her about, though. She assured that she could help. Well, that's okay. I mean, it's not okay that you suffer from seizures, and I can only imagine how painful that it has to be. But I can help you manage it. With a growing, taunting tone in his voice, he began to walk toward her slowly, causing her to instinctively walk backwards and off of the gravel path. As he walked toward her slower still, a grin slowly formed on his face, and he gazed at her crazily. This sent a chill down her spine, and suddenly, for some weird reason, she could hear Nev's warning voice in her head. Some people might not be what they see. Now she was thinking that this is what you call a fucking O. Henry ending, you stupid girl. Brock, you're kind of scaring me right now. Through the now, toothy grin, he said, I don't know why you're starting to run away, little lady. Ain't gonna do you no good. She was thunderstruck, and at the same time was wondering why he was talking like that, like some backwoods redneck thug. Come on now, get on back here and let me give you the rest of the scoop. I ain't through a showing you what I gots to show you. After several minutes of this hide-and-seek routine in these woods, he was getting even more impatient, and his dialogue was growing even more insane. Come on, little red riding hood, let's quit this. Oh my god, Brock, you're not making sense. Are you joking? It's not funny. Finally, his patience reached the end of the proverbial rope. Oh, hell with it. I'm through playing with you. Now it's time to feed, so now it's gonna fucking feed. Leave me alone, Brock. This is a sick joke. Remy found herself to be in the grip of the worst panic attack she'd ever had, and rightly so. Brock had transformed from someone she had strong interests and aspirations of having something with romantically to a raving psychotic who she was frantically and desperately stomping through twigs and mud to get away from. He was making absolutely no sense at all with his taunts and was terrifying her to her core. Every second that passed, his rationale faltered. Completely winded, she squatted at the base of a cypress tree, feet and calves muddy and with scrapes scattered on various parts of her body from multiple falls. She was trying to keep as still and as quiet as she could, although her breath was coming and going in violent hitches and heaves. From somewhere behind her, she heard the loud snap of a fallen limb. She sneakily peeked around the trunk of the tree to get a glimpse. Nothing was there. She then heard Brock's voice getting closer with ever-growing rage in it, and she darted away from the cypress tree. Brock saw her and continued his vile verbal barrage. Go ahead on, boy. Gravy train's waiting. Get her. Chaotic confusion erupted. Ramy felt her grip on reality slipping as she was met with what she saw. A gigantic, 
aberrant creature, tall, slumped, and mockingly doggish. Like something out of a Mike Plug painting, it stood with long, gaunt arms and spindly fingers tipped with glossy black claws. It stared at Raimi with intensely yellow and evil eyes. Its jaws snapped open and shut. Gator-like teeth that were razor sharp were dripping with foamy streams of saliva. It descended upon Raimi and with a swift swing swatted her face, causing her to soar several feet from where she was standing. She whimpered as she crawled away dazed from the blow. She felt warm blood flowing in freshets from gashes on her face. Brock approached the two of them and the beast slowed its advance. The monster seemed to take its commands from Brock. Was that possible? Was it his pet? It looked back and forth from Raimi to Brock. Ardent determination seemed to overcome the thing as it seemed barely able to control its animalistic attack. With a few more taunts hurled at her from Brock, the creature resumed its advance toward Raimi. Now she tried to scurry away backwards on her hands and feet looking in horror at the beast. It grew closer and its snout was only inches away from her face. Suddenly, upsetting the entire attack, a voice yelled from the entrance of the woods. Raimi! Stay down! It was the detective, and he had a shotgun leveled off and pointed at the beast. With lightning fast, unnatural speed and agility, the demonic creature charged at the detective, who was only milliseconds away from squeezing off a blast from the shotgun. It swatted the weapon from the detective's grip, and before he had a chance to flee, the monster began a ravenous assault. Oh, son of a bitch, you got me. This continued a bit longer, and it was apparent that the creature was only having some form of twisted pleasure from only brutalizing the detective. If he wanted to kill him, he would have already done it. To make things worse, even Brock had gotten in on the action of the brutality and terror by having shot the detective once in the side with a pistol that he had been carrying. The detective lay helpless on the ground after the assault. Raimi was gathering her senses once again amidst the horror. Brock was approaching the detective, who was laying on his back. The creature standing hunched over him like someone over a vanquished enemy. With his pistol brandished and pointed at the fallen and injured detective, he continued his taunts as the creature stood slumped next to him, frantically swinging its glances back and forth between the detective and Brock. With a devastating and thundering report that rolled away with an echo into the woods, the shotgun had been retrieved by a now recomposed Raimi. She had blown a shot into Brock's back, killing him instantly. He fell forward onto his front side just a foot in front of the detective. A look of shock and disbelief was frozen on his face. The creature was even more enraged. It shot a glance skyward and emitted an ear-shattering gargled shriek. The detective tried desperately to move to grab the pistol that had still been in Brock's grip, but it was futile. His gunshot wound made it impossible for him to move with any agility at all. The creature advanced toward Raimi with a slobbery smirk on its snout. It had the look of terrible concentration. It was going to enjoy making her pay for what she had just done. Its stride was slow and certain, and its spindly fingers made clicking sounds as they writhed, making the claws tap together. Raimi had one chance to end this. With a body that trembled uncontrollably, she mustered everything within her and raised the calamitous barrel of the weapon to aim it at the creature's face. She struggled to keep her aim as steady as the horrible monster approached. Her finger rested upon the trigger, and as the creature raised both of its gangly arms to bring down in its ruinous and final attack, the shot rang out. Open wide, Spot! It sent both parties back in opposite directions. Raimi flailed back a few feet from the rifle's recoil. 
but the creature was sent back several feet, roughly half its head now gone from the blast. Blood flowed in steady streams over and through its fingers that cradled its head. Stringy sinew, brain matter, and gruesome torn flesh was visible as it convulsed on its feet. Its screams were gargled as its blood saturated its airways. It fell to its knees and proceeded to whimper like a wounded puppy, momentarily jerking a feeling of sympathy from Raimi who already had tears streaming down her face. The feeling of sympathy was short-lived, however. The beast fell forward like a defeated tree, landing on its front side the same as Brock, with a heavy thud that was almost sickening in its sound. Its death twitches went on for a few minutes. The detective struggled to crawl toward a tree to sit up against its trunk, as Raimi quickly came to his aid. She could see that his gunshot wound wasn't going to be life-threatening, or at least it didn't look to be so. She would need to get him to a hospital immediately, though. So she began the task of standing him to his feet so that they could get to the car. It would probably be quicker for her to do it this way rather than wait for an ambulance to get there. There would be a whole lot of explaining to do, and that needed to be reserved for another time. Right now, she needed to get the detective help. The two were on their feet and slowly but surely made their way toward the mouth of the woods. Having finally made it to her car, she secured the detective in the passenger side and quickly rounded it to get in herself. She flared the car into life and with a quick look at the detective, sped off down the road.